Well, good evening. If you could say praise the Lord with me, let's do that. All right. I wonder if we could stand to our feet tonight and just begin to love on the Lord with no music, with no prompting, and just begin to just begin to give Him praise that He is worthy of. Father, we love you tonight. Lord, we're thankful for everything that you have given us. Lord, we're thankful for every blessing. God, we're thankful for every trial. Lord, we're thankful, God, for your divine word. Lord, your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. God, we are so honored to be in your presence. We're honored to give you glory, God. We're honored to speak your name, God. And we thank you, Jesus, for all that you are doing in this hour, in this place, and in this church, God. We love you, Lord. We give you glory, God. We give you praise, God, you are so worthy of it. We thank you, Jesus. That's it. Let's lift up our voices for a moment. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Shout unto God with the voice of praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! Well, it is an indeed honor to be home. Thank you all for allowing us to go, and thank you all for allowing us to come back, right? Amen. Well, we're excited to be here tonight. I have missed each and every one of you. Truly, you've been on my hearts and in my minds and in my prayers, truly, because there's something about having that place to call home, yeah? There's something about having that home church where, you know, it's fun to go travel. It's fun to go see the world. It's fun to go serve in somebody else's foreign field. But I was ready to get back to Pasadena, Texas, y'all. I, I was ready to get back and to seeing the same harvest that I saw right here on these streets, right here in this community. The same, the same miracles that we saw right here in this church, in these grounds, in these streets. I was ready to come home. I was ready to get back. So I'm, I'm happy to see your shiny, pearly white teeth, shiny white faces. Oh, yeah. I want to turn your attention to the book of Acts as you're standing. That's why I had you stand. I'm not, I'm not just trying to make you exercise tonight, I promise. But I want to turn your attention to the book of Acts, chapter 4. I want to give credit and honor to Pastor Cisco. I'm so very thankful for his covering over my life and my ministry, truly. This past 10 days as we have traveled and, you know, been a part of the crusade there in the country of Bangladesh, it was so assuring to know that I had a pastor, a man of God in my life, my spiritual covering, my authority. I knew that he was right here. I knew that he was right here. That's a blessing. That's a blessing. And uh, I was so thankful for that, and I'm honored to stand before you and to stand where where he stands on a regular basis. So the book of Acts chapter 4, verse 27 is where we're going to start reading. And it says, For of a truth against the holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and with the people of Israel were gathered together. Ooh, that's a bunch of King James reading. For to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. Still, what are we talking about? Verse 29, And now the Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word. Verse 30, By stretching forth thine hand to heal, that signs and wonders may be done by the name of the holy child Jesus. Verse 31, and when they had prayed, the Bible says the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and spake the word of God with boldness. I want to turn your attention back to verse 30. And it says, by stretching forth thy hand to heal, 
that many signs and wonders may be done by the name of the Holy Child Jesus. I want to speak to you as you can turn your Bibles or, or turn your attention. I want to speak to you tonight upon this subject. The benefit of stretching. The benefit of stretching. Pray with me tonight as we go before the Lord. Father, you are good. Father, your word is perfect, it is infallible, it is true, it rightly divides. Lord, we're thankful for your word. God, we stand upon it tonight, knowing that you are the rewarder of those that diligently seek you. God, touch my lips of clay, anoint them. Lord, let it fall on ripe ears in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. You may be seated. There was a time in my life that I identified as a runner. Yeah, you know, somebody that likes to wake up early in the morning and go run several miles almost on a daily basis. There was a time in my life where probably three to five days a week I would run anywhere from four to six miles a day. About 20 to 25 miles a day just out there just trudging along and and like that was part of my identity you know when you go and you meet somebody like hey what do you do how are you or you know somebody might be like well I'm a doctor or somebody might say you know I like to do this or like to do that and I would say you know I'm a runner no longer do I say that however I I do know what it is to to go on a really long run and every really long run begins and ends with a little bit of stretching. A little bit of stretching. No, in, in no one way would you be able to run all those miles. You know, there, there is something that has, you know, some muscle memory. That, there's something that has to do with it. But it always takes a little bit of stretching. Stretching of your calf muscles, your quads, your hamstrings. Just trying to get loosened up. Where you just have to stretch a little bit. Before and after. Some of the best athletes from all over the world, they don't just simply go out there and lift the heaviest of weights right there. they got to warm up a little bit. They have to stretch. They simply don't go run out and, and run marathons. or They simply don't run out onto a field. And, and I think uh, the average soccer or football player, they run like, I think, three to five miles just in a match. They don't simply just run out there without ever having to exercise or ever having to stretch before. Some of the best athletes all over the world, they are great advocates of stretching before their performance. Quite possibly the best quarterback to ever play in the NFL. If you're not a fan, I'm sorry. I'm not saying I'm a fan, but it's just a fact. Tom Brady, he, he attributes his longevity. He's getting ready to, he just played his 21st season as an NFL quarterback when the average season, is on, or the average career is only six to seven years. He's now three times surpassed what is the average length of a career as a NFL quarterback. He attributes the longevity of his career, his health, and his stamina to a non-traditional strength style of training, which focuses on stretching, focuses on being able to take a hit and not become injured, focuses on stretching his muscles and, and, and being very pliable so he can absorb blows, he can take a hit and not bend or break, but he's actually loose enough to be able to take a compound compounded hit stretching this concept of stretching is is something that is very important at least if you're an athlete or something like that this concept of of pushing and and breaking and 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 pressing and and maybe even feeling a little bit of tension and pain it's deemed very important stretching the benefits of it stretching Tonight in 
our reading in Acts chapter 4, Peter and John, it says that they were full of the Holy Ghost and they encountered some opposition. Many miracles they have already seen, many signs and wonders they've already have already been attributed to their ministry. And they begin to take some heat for it. Let me tell you tonight, the further you press into God, the greater things that you see, the, the further you go, you know, there's going to be some critics. They were already beginning to take a little heat for the things that they have seen, the things that they have done. In our reading tonight in Acts 4, we were talking about Peter and John. Well, Peter and John in Acts 2, they had their upper room experience. They had their Holy Ghost experience. And it, and it came and it met them and they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit of God gave the utterance. They were on fire for God. There was nothing that they couldn't take. There was nothing that they couldn't tackle. There was no, no opposition that they weren't ready to, to just run right into. In Acts chapter 3, that same Peter and John, they were leaving the temple at the hour of prayer, and there was a lame man beside them on the road. And, and the Bible says that, that they didn't offer him any money, but that he offered him. He said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. He offered him Jesus Christ, and that lame man was walking and leaping and praising God. God was already using Peter and John in the gifts of the Spirit. And then in Acts chapter 4, we read that there were more and more miraculous things that were attributed to the, to the ministry of Peter and John. But they had more and more opposition. Greater miracles, greater things done, greater signs, greater wonders, a greater stretching, but also a greater opposition had come unto them. Funny how that happens. The closer we try to get to God, sometimes there's people behind us that are just trying to yank us back and yank us back and yank us back, not wanting us to, to see the things of God, not wanting us to, to claim our victory, not wanting us to get those blessings, not wanting us to be healed. This reference that we read tonight was taken from a prayer. That, that scripture that we read was taken from a prayer that Peter and John were praying. And perhaps others joined in the prayer. And the prayer was this, basically. He said, Lord, grant us boldness that when we stretch forth our hand to pray, that when we stretch out our faith, that when we stretch out our belief, that it will be done in the name of Jesus. Because we have some people that are trying to wear us down. We have some people that are trying to shut us up. They have, there's, some, there's some people that are trying to, to put a hold on to what God is trying to do. So God, give us the strength. Give us the strength to stretch forth our hand. Give us the strength to stretch our faith. Give us the strength to believe that it will be done in the name of Jesus. How many believes... In the name of Jesus. How many believes that by thy holy child Jesus, it can be done? I'm here to tell you tonight as we worshiped and as we prayed and as they sang so beautifully, Leanna, such a good job ushering in the presence of God, that there is nothing that God cannot do tonight. I want you to understand tonight that there is no need that you have that he cannot make the way tonight. I know that sounds so easy to say. That sounds so basic, so trite. Maybe even sounds not only basic but far-fetched. That you might have a need here tonight that you think is insurmountable. And there are so many layers of opposition that if I say that it can be done tonight, you say, ha, already unbelief, already doubt. It's like, yeah, right, Matt, like, I don't even know you or, you know, because there's maybe somebody that here tonight that you don't know me. 
Or, you know, I don't even know you too well, and you don't know the entire story. You don't know my entire home life. You don't know the entire opposition. But I tell you tonight, I tell you with boldness, I, as I stretch forth my hand in boldness tonight, I tell you there is nothing that God cannot do for each and every situation tonight. There is nothing that he cannot do for each and every situation that you brought in. Every heaviness, every weight, every decision, every illness, every sickness, every pain, every trial, every family problem, every financial issue. He can make a way where there seems to be no way. My God can make a way where there seems to be no way. I wish I had somebody that believed that tonight. They prayed, Lord, grant us boldness that we can stretch forth our hands to pray, our faith, our belief, and that it will be done in Jesus' name. That in verse 30, and then the very next verse, in verse 31, the Bible says, tells us that God did just that. He did just that. They prayed a prayer. And then in verse 31, immediately when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm here to tell you that God can answer your need just that fast. You don't have to wait weeks, months, days, years. I'm here to tell you that he can literally answer your need just that quickly. From one verse to the next, from one instant to the next, he can do it just that fast. He can heal you just that fast. He can make a way just that fast. He can help you just that fast. He can relieve pressure just that fast. He can relieve anxiety just that fast. He can relieve doubt just that fast. He can do it. They stretched, they stretched, they stretched. Stretching produces quick results. Quick results from one verse to the next. Quick results. There is a benefit. There is a benefit in stretching and stretching. Luke chapter 17, I can turn your attention to that chapter and that book in the Bible. Chapter 17, verse 3 says, Take heed to yourself. If thy brother trespasses against you, rebuke him. And if he repent, forgive him. We've heard this verse. And if he trespasses against you seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turn again unto thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. Verse 5, the apostles got a little bit confused. They were like, Lord, I have to really repent and and." him all those many times that just sounds too much verse 5 of Luke chapter 17 the apostle said Lord increase my faith like what you're talking about just it sounds it sounds too difficult help me help me increase my faith and the Lord says and this is the scripture that we all know too well he says if you have the faith as a grain of a mustard seed you might say unto this sycamine tree, Be thou plucked up out of its root, and then be thou planted in the sea, and it should obey you. Wow. Just a little bit of faith is what he's talking about. But they were saying, Lord, increase my faith. And he was saying, all you need is a little bit of faith. But the disciples, as they prayed, Lord, Lord, you know, they were, they were basically saying, God, you know, stretch us. Increase our faith. Stretch us. But in this case, in this case, in this scripture, this isn't anything that he can do except to move us. This isn't anything that, that God can do except he, he wants to move us. He's, he, this, this increase of faith that the disciples prayed for, he said, God, increase my faith. But the Lord in turn said, you know what? I'm just going to move you. I'm just going to move you. I'm just going to begin to enlarge you. I'm just going to begin to stretch you. 
And why, why would he say that? Why would he begin to stretch their mind and refer to this mustard seed? Because in the Bible, it tells you that he has given you the measure of faith. The measure of faith. The increase of faith in you is nothing that you can really receive. You can't really receive an increase of faith because he has given you the measure of faith. You already have, listen to me, you already have the amount of faith that you need for God to move in your situation. You already have every component of faith right now in you to receive your miracle, to receive your help, to help you get a new job, to help you to believe, to help you to to live in holy holiness and to, to live with the Holy Ghost every day. Because Romans 12 and 3 says, God hath dealt every man the measure of faith. I want you to understand tonight that you already have it. You already have it. It's not for you to say, God, increase my faith. Because you already have the measure of faith. It is not a measure of faith. It is not a little portion of faith, but it's the measure of faith. And every person has the measure of faith. He's given it to you. He's given it to you. I want you to understand tonight that you have what it takes. You have what it takes. You have what it takes. You have the measure of faith. All you have to do is access it. All you have to do is access it. Faith, that, that measure, it's like, a, it's like a, a vial, like a vial, and in it, it's like this bottle of water. How about that? And in it, Every man is dealt the exact amount. It's, it's, it's the measure. It's not a measure. You don't have greater faith than me. I don't have greater faith than you. But it's, it's the measure. It's, 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 an, it's, an, it's an amount that we all have. But we just have to open it up. We have to open it up and access it. Some of us only sip, you know. You know, that's, that's all the faith I need for right now. And I guess, I guess that's good. You know, this is, this is all I'm allowed is just this little, I'm just allowed this little bit amount of faith. You know, this is, this is the faith that I understand. This is the faith that I have access to. And then some of us have a little bit more faith. But what he wants you to do, and I know what y'all are expecting now, but he wants you to access all the faith. He wants you to have access to every last drop. Every last drop. You have what it takes. You have what it takes. There's a certain measure that you have access to. The Bible says this kind goes not out but by prayer and fasting. Yeah, we have to pray. We have to fast. It goes not out but by prayer and fasting. The amount of faith that you need to, to, to see a miracle in your life. The amount of faith that you need to, to believe in somebody else's miracle for their life is accessible. And it goes not out but by prayer and fasting. You can't get it, in other words, but by prayer and fasting. And God is no respecter of persons. That's why he's given the measure of faith. It's not that I'm someone special or, or I have a certain pedigree or, or a certain upbringing. No, my father's not a preacher. My mother wasn't a pastor's wife. I don't have some pedigree. I don't have some, some pedestal to stand upon. I'm not, any, I'm not anything special, but he's no respecter of persons. We all have the measure of faith. It, it, it is so simple to understand. 
It's so simple to even try to explain, and it's almost too simple that it blows our minds because we're like, it's just, just the measure of faith. And so if you want it, you can have it. If you want access to it, you can have access to it. If you pray and fast, you can have access to it. It's really that simple. It's really that simple. The, the Bible, we complicate it so much. We complicate the miraculous. We complicate a miracle for our life. We complicate an answer to prayer. We complicate victory over our mind. We complicate, you know, being free of oppression. We complicate a, a job uh, interview and the success of that. We complicate it all when if we just accessed faith, if we just access the measure of faith, Greater performance in our life, greater performance in your personal life is first practiced. Just like the stretching, it's, it's practice. It's over and over and over. It's repetition. It's practice in that quiet room. It's practice in that back room. It's practiced where no one else is seen. The man that broke the world record for the marathon, the Nigerian, he broke... He, he was the first person to ever, and just in the last couple months, to run a full marathon, which is 26.2 miles in under two hours. My fastest half marathon, which is half that distance, was an hour and 47 minutes. So that man ran double my distance and double my speed, essentially. That's just phenomenal to think about. But he didn't practice and he didn't train in front of everybody. There were years and years and over and over, repetition and repetition, and his great performance was first practiced. There were growing pains. There was stretching. I'm sure there was pains. There was pressing. There was pushing of him, his coach, his mind, stretching, stretching, stretching. We don't judge somebody else's highlight reel by your or my backstage. Does that make sense to you tonight? We don't, we don't look at somebody else's highlight reel, somebody else's great performance, and we don't judge that by what we do in the back, what we do in the quiet, what we do in our silence, our growing, our pressing, our pushing, our praying, our fasting our struggles, our stretching. Because tonight, I want you to know that there is a stretching that is taking place. There is a stretching that is taking place. God is pressing us as a church body, as a corporate body. He's pressing us. Individually, he is pressing and he is stretching you. God is calling us to a greater place in him he's calling us to a greater performance if you will in him but it takes practice 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 stretching pressing moving higher heights deeper depths he's calling us to a new place in him and God is calling each and every person here tonight under the sound of my voice. He is calling you to a new place for His purpose. You were not here by accident tonight. You, Yes, you drove your car. Yes, you made time to come here. But each and every one of us purposefully are here by His authority, by His unction, by His divine inspiration. We are here for a purpose. We are here tonight to be stretched. We are here tonight to be stretched. In this season, here in our local body of prayer and fasting, this season of prayer and fasting, it takes some stretching. Yes? Say yes. <laughs> you get hungry or you get hangry, you get tired, you feel weak. I liked a couple weeks ago what Pastor said, and I'm sure I've heard it, but it just made so much sense. He said, hunger pains are prayer pains. Y'all remember him saying that? 
Yeah, he said, it was on a Wednesday night. He said, hunger pains are prayer pains. So it's like, if you're hungry, well, I guess I need to pray. But, man, I'd be praying all day long. Whew. But then this season, God is placing himself. He's placing the things of him, the, 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 his kingdom. He's placing it in our forefronts of our mind. He's placing it right here, the forefront of our mind and in our focus. And he's reaching unto you as you deny yourself, as you fast, as you pray, where he says this kind goes not out by prayer and fasting. So, so I'm doing it, Lord, and as we deny ourselves, and as we deny our flesh, as we place him first, he in turn is placing himself right at the forefront of our mind and our thoughts. Because John in chapter 3, verse 30, he says, He must increase and I must decrease. Where I've got to have him first. I've got to have his things first. I've got to have his kingdom first. God is stretching us. He's stretching you. He's pulling you. He's pushing you. He's moving you. Stretching. He's stretching you for growth. He's stretching you for a greater capacity in your life. Stretching your human mentality for his glory. He's even changing the way you think. He's even changing the way you process problems. He's even altering your very mindset in this stretching, in this growth, in this pushing, in this pulling, in this, this perhaps breaking. He can, he's changing the way you speak. He's changing the way you act. He's changing your language. He's taking out language. He's putting in his verbiage. He's changing you. Because less of me is what I have to have and more of him. Less of me I have to have and more of him. He must increase. I must decrease. Jesus said, take up your cross. Deny yourself. Follow me. Come on to a new place. Come on to a different place. Come to a place that stretches you. Come to a place that pushes you. Come to a place that changes you. Forget about your own self. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me to a new place. Follow me to a greater place. Follow me. In order for us to grow, in order for each and every one of us to grow, there must be a stretching. If you're going to be as tall as Clayton, there's going to take a lot of stretching in your life. Take some stretching, even tearing, even breaking. The power lifter, he doesn't just go out there and settle up to the bar plant his feet, grab the bar, pull up 600 pounds. No, it takes years and years of putting in the grind daily. Putting in the grind daily. Pulling 210 times. Tearing and ripping muscles. Compounding joints. Compounding tissue. Tearing and building new muscles, then pulling 300. Same thing over and over, back to the grind. Pulling, pushing, tearing, compounding, breaking until he can ultimately lift what he wants to lift. The runner has to get up every day, grind, grind, grind. The quarterback has to be in the film room studying Preparing, stretching, throwing, 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 building, tearing, replacing, building, tearing, replacing, daily, daily, daily. 
The prayer warrior just doesn't walk into the prayer room and pray for three hours straight, interceding for the underground church of China, interceding for missionaries and evangelists around the world without first starting daily, daily, five minutes, ten minutes, I'm tired, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, I can't go anymore. And then all of a sudden the list after daily, 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 the list is, is stretched so long where how can I not pray three hours? How can I not pray an hour? How can I not be led of the Spirit? The altar worker just doesn't come down to the front and pray for somebody in need until they actually come down to the front and begin to pray for somebody in need where they stretch their faith, they begin to hear for God, from God, they begin to, to pray for somebody here and pray for somebody here and, and hear from God for this need and, and stretch their faith for this need. And, and then before you know it, they just know how to flow in an altar, in an altar service. The soul winner, rarely does they just, do they just go out into the street and have a 100% success rate where every person they witness to comes to church, changes their life. No, but it's, it's daily talking, daily planting seed, daily, daily sowing, daily trying to reap until finally somebody comes in and they receive their reward. Seeing somebody baptized in the lovely name of Jesus and speak with new tongues as they did in the book of Acts. The Bible study teacher doesn't simply just walk into a room full of hungry people with their Bibles and their notepads, and they say, well, I really didn't think of anything to say tonight. No, but it takes study, it takes prayer, it takes time and time, devotion, devotion by themselves before they are in front of the room. It's time for the stretching to commence. It's time for the stretching to begin. The idea of what your faith is, the idea of what, the ideas of your personal ministry, the ideas of the miraculous in your life, the ideas of the way you think about the, yourself, the ideas of, 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 of what you think God has called you to do is going to stretch and begin stretching. It's time to, uh, to stretch the, the idea of who you are in Christ. It's time to, to stretch the idea of what God has called you to do. It's time to dispel the naysayers and, and, and get the negative thoughts and get the negative people out of your midst and out of your minds and out of your, out of your circles and out of your groups. It's, it's time to lay hold on your ability to stretch and allow God to truly use you as they prayed by stretching forth thine hand to heal. Often we pray, God, use us, use me. But rarely do we allow the breaking. When the going gets tough, sometimes we just go, get up and go. But there is a benefit to stretching that will change us into what he wants a breaking, a bending, a moving, a growing. It's time to be stretched. It's time to stretch. This past week, as we've been in the country of Bangladesh, it has stretched my mindset on what God can do. It has stretched my faith. It has challenged me and begin to stretch me as to what God can truly do and what God truly is. You know, in my personal ministry and with my wife, Kate, over the last five years, we have been exposed to some pretty miraculous things. We have, we have seen miracles, prayed for people right in front of us, I, I, I've personally prayed for people, and God has used me to, to see miracles in their lives. But it, but it wasn't something that I just inherited, you know. 
It wasn't something that God just came down and was like a lightning bolt. No. It's not how it really worked. Our year of missions that we spent in the continent of Europe, it stretched us. It, it almost broke us. Financially, it did break us. But it opened us to many great ministries. Unto that point, I don't know if I had ever prayed for somebody and they were healed right in front of me. Up until that point, I can't really say that that had ever happened. I'm sure God had used me just as he's used countless people in here. You know, we pray and we believe and they're healed and it's like awesome. It's like a collective, a collective thing, you know. And I'm so, I'm, so I'm sure that God had used me to pray and people were healed. I have no doubt. But I, honestly, I don't know if I had ever seen that personally. But then came the stretching. But then came the pain. But then came the breaking. Then came the pushing. Because stretching isn't always fun. It's not always easy, but it has to be, it becomes necessary to being in the place that God has desired us. And the place that God desires you. A stretching. And after witnessing somebody healed right in front of my eyes for the very first time, I became hungry to see that again. I became hungry to see that in my own life. I became hungry to see that fulfilled in my own ministry. I began stretching, stretching, pressing, pushing, hungry, hungry. In 2015, when we came home, every opportunity that I had to minister in any capacity, whether it be small groups in a church or visiting churches and every opportunity I pushed I pressed I wanted to see God see God's power just heal somebody instantly Kate's grandfather I remember praying for him and his PSA levels of his cancer dropped from cancerous to non-cancerous I was like wow God just did that a girl in our church at the time she had a bad doctor's report it was on a midweek service like this, and they had youth service. After service, I just rolled up over there with my wife. I was like, hey, let's pray for you. God's going to heal you right now. Accessing that faith. Accessing that faith. That girl's doctor report changed instantly. Her next visit, a brand new report. I was working with my dad at his brand new property. We were out clearing trees, dirty, nasty, sweaty, you know, filthy, dirty. But my mom's pastor at the time, the pastor's wife, she was sick. I left, I I called them, I said, hey, can I pray for y'all today? I met them at the church three minutes, five minutes later, stopped what I was doing, went down there, and I prayed for her to be healed. And she lived, well, up until just this year, so four more years after the diagnosis was terminal. Hungry, stretching, pushing a man's shoulder had he had pain from an injury at work for 10 plus years he woke up every day in pain in his shoulder we prayed for him on a sunday service the pain a sunday night service i didn't even know what we were praying for i just prayed he was healed stretching looking searching pushing pressing in this last year alone i saw a deaf ear opened up last february Y'all have heard the story of my friend Hayden where his doctor's report changed dramatically. A lady's lady's, uh, lung and cancer condition, it was possible cancerous, and she had a lung disease. She went from a Sunday to a Tuesday with a lung disease to a Tuesday with no lung disease. I've seen many pains leave the body. I've seen other pains, other, other lives and situations restored. I'm not up here to boast or to brag, as you can see, I'm deserving of deserving of no fanfare. I'm not here to try to hype you up or, or get you to clap or get you to pat, them up, pat me on the back. What I'm trying to say is that we all have access to that same gift of faith. God is no respecter of persons. God is no respecter of persons. Brother Winslow said that the resident gift of faith is operating in this place. 
And Brother Hernandez told us that those seven weeks is because it has settled in in different people's hearts and in their lives and in their minds. He said it settled in here where it took us like those weeks to like just get it rooted and grounded in us. I'm telling you, we can still be pushing and pressing and stretching to see any type of situation restored. You understand me? Any type of situation restored. It's not about me or it's not about you, but it's about the power of him that dwells in us. The power of God that dwells in you. We are greater. The Bible says we are to see greater things than these. The things that the disciples saw, the the things that Peter and John saw. Stretching forth his hand to heal and then multitudes receiving the Holy Ghost. It is within us. We have it. You have it. Point to yourself. I have it. I have it. Stand with me tonight. I'm conscious of the time. We're going to wrap this up. The Bible tells us in Matthew 15 that the great multitude saw the lame walk, the mute speak, the maimed healed, and blinded eyes open. Mark 7 says that he does all things well, the deaf to hear, the dumb to speak. Acts 3, the lame man leaping up, walking and leaping and praising God. And Mark 16 says, these signs shall follow them that believe. How many believe tonight? These signs shall follow them that believe. In Jesus' name, in my name, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up servants, drink any deadly thing. It shall not harm them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. These signs shall follow you that believes Because in Jesus' name, we have access. We have access to it. We have access. And I want you to know tonight, before we leave, God is going to heal your body tonight. Before we leave, with no hype, no fanfare, God's going to heal. Because the Bible says he's a healer. It's not about my reputation. I'm made of no reputation. I am to be made of no reputation, the Bible tells me. So we're just going to put it in God's hands. And if he's a healer, he's going to heal. Any other situation in your life, financial need, a miracle of finance, we're just going to believe that God's going to do it and start doing it right now. From one scripture to the next where we stretch forth our hand, we stretch forth our mind, we stretch forth our voice, we increase our, we we access our faith, he's going to do it. He's going to do it. Just like that. Kate prayed for a Muslim lady on Friday night. A little Muslim lady came up on Friday night. Can't communicate. You know, we're 12 hours on the other side of the world. Some sort of back pain. Kate began to pray for her. and They prayed the prayer of faith and said, In the name of Jesus, be made whole. That's about how difficult the prayer is. You can access that faith tonight. In the name of Jesus, I need a job. And I'm going to believe it right now in Jesus' name. So they prayed, and you know what? She wasn't healed like that, you know? So, oh, man, it's a big letdown. No, no, it's not a big deal. We're just going to pray again. You know, they prayed the second time as the word of God went forth, and that little lady, she was like moving around, thumbs up, eyes. Translator came, no pain, no pain. You know, that lady came the next night little Muslim lady came the next night and I I don't know for a fact but 
Saturday night, there were 12,000 people in attendance and 7,000 received the baptism of the Holy Ghost for the very first time. That miracle and that little lady, I have no doubt she came the next night and she received the Holy Ghost for the very first time. There was a young man with me or with us on this trip, 24 years old. First time he'd ever been out of the, out of the continental United States. He prayed for a little boy, his ear. He said his ear, I didn't see it, but he said his ear was like this, where it looked like two lobes. Couldn't even see the ear hole. He grabbed his hand on both sides of his head, prayed for him, said, in the name of Jesus, be made whole. And when he removed his hand, he said, I couldn't even believe it. He said it scared him. He said, because the ear was perfect as the other one was perfect. I'm talking to God that can do creative miracles. Creative miracles. There was a crippled man that left walking. There were arms and hands that as we stretched our faith, they stretched out and became whole. I believe there were over a hundred different arms and limbs and legs that were stretched out and became whole in this three-day crusade in the country of Bangladesh. I prayed for a man on a Saturday night. Pastor mentioned it on Sunday morning. He was looking around. He was pulling up a shirt sleeve because he had a tumor about the size of a golf ball right here. He'd had it his whole life, a cyst tumor or something. And he was looking around trying to find it. His eyes elated. He was like, I can't find it. I can't find it. I'm talking about a God that can make things that are obstacles in your life disappear just like that. And after everybody had gone, after things were already settling down, there was a boy of about 16 years old. Me, another man, and the lady began to encourage him to speak and to pray. And we, we were encourage him to say the word hallelujah. He'd never spoken a word audible in his entire life. And as he was sitting there trying to say something, trying to say something, we were just in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. We made whole in the name of Jesus, just encouraging him. We were saying hallelujah with him. We were saying Jeshuname, which is Jesus' name in Bangladesh. We all had to learn like little words, right? You know, we try, you know, try to communicate. And all of a sudden, as we were doing this, it was just like a, a switch went off. He went from to hallelujah just that fast. And I have never seen a group of 10 or 15 boys, young men, be so excited for their friend. It was like high fives everywhere because he said his first word in his entire life was hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm talking about stretching, stretching, stretching. Things that we don't expect, the things that maybe even startles us when we pray that prayer, but stretch your hand stretch your faith increase access that faith and allow God to do a miracle in your life tonight I invite you to the front Dustin you having back trouble bud yeah, Jose told me so I'm not like I just knew, I mean, I didn't just know that, Jose told me. We're going to pray and your back's going to go away, okay? Your back pain's going to go away. We're going to pray tonight and that's going to go away for sure. There it is. There's a level of expectation that just hit this, hit this place. I want you to just throw your hands up right now. And I want you to just begin to thank him. Listen, we're not going to beg God tonight, Dustin. We're not going to beg him. We're not going to beg him. In the name of Jesus.
the name of Jesus. All right, listen real quick. If you have a physical pain in your body, I want you to raise your hand. Physical pain. All right, we're going to pray for you. God's going to heal you tonight, okay? Who needs a miracle in their, just kind of like in their family without being, you know, too direct? That can be very general. It can be very general. We're not looking for, you know, to dig up skeletons out of closets or nothing, you know. Just general. It's like, you know what? This situation's a mess. Hey, I've got a family, y'all. You know, and I've got a situation that's a mess. Y'all pray for me and Kate. No, I'm joking. It's not that. We believe tonight that God's going to start intervening in that situation. If you make mention of it, if you make mention of it, and the Bible says, cast your cares upon him. The Lord started talking to me about casting cares this morning. Casting cares. I thought I was going to preach about casting it to the ground. But that's not what happened. But he wants you to cast your cares before him and just give it to him. Just give it to him. Just, just throw it down. Forget about it. Forget about the pain, the problem, the worry, and say, thank you, Jesus, for doing it. Thank you, Jesus, for doing it. In a little, in just one minute, we're going to pray. And God's going to just walk through this place. Faith's going to just rise even greater than it is right now. And I want you to begin to thanking Him. Dustin, as we pray, I want you to thank Him for healing. And then I want, as you pray, I want you to be like, thank you, Jesus. Just try it out as we pray. And God's going to heal you. If you have a pain in your body, that's what I want you to do. I want you to just kind of exercise it. I want you to kind of stretch that muscle, stretch that pain. And God's going to heal you. If it's a, if it's a problem in your mind or a problem in your in your your, your head or, you know, like like something that 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 is like it's just a weight. Something that's a weight. I want you to just begin to like just give it to him. I want you to physically think like, okay, God, I'm I'm giving it to you. I'm taking whatever worry and pain or whatever trial, whatever obstacle that's in my mind. I'm just gonna I want you to like wipe your forehead of it. Take it out of your mind, wipe your forehead and give it to him. Anything that you can do that's an exercise or a stretch or a pain or, or something that's weighing you down, I want you to do that as we pray. As we pray. And God's going to do it in our lives tonight. How many believes that? How many believes that? Remember, it's the, it's the, it's the same faith that you have. It's the same faith, the measure of faith. All right, with our hands lifted up, here we go. With our hands lifted up, with our head up, I want you to join me in prayer. And when I say in the name of Jesus, I want you to say thank you, Jesus. And then whatever it is after that, thank you, Jesus, for healing me. Thank you, Jesus, for doing X, Y, Z. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, by the authority of the Holy Ghost, and by the power in the name of Jesus, by the authority of the Word of God right now in the name of Jesus. I speak life. Lord, I speak wholeness. God, I speak newness of life. God, I speak miracles right now in the name of Jesus. Right now in the name of Jesus. Pain, go right now in Jesus' name. Heaviness, go right now in the name of Jesus. Healing, come right now in the name of Jesus. Be healed right now in the name of Jesus. Your victory comes right now in the name of Jesus. There it is. Heaviness is leaving. Heaviness is leaving. Pain is going. Your answer is coming. Come on, that's it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I declare it. I declare it. 
I declare it. I declare it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I speak creative miracles right now. Lord, I speak newness of life right now. I speak wholeness in Jesus' name. I speak answers. God, I speak victory. I speak clarity of mind, clarity of vision. In Jesus' name. We do not believe the doctor's report. We do not believe the pain. We do not believe the heartache. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. In the name of Jesus. Come on, stretch. Come on, stretch. 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 Yes.